All right, my apologies. That video got cut off when it wasn't supposed to. So we'll just pick up from where we left off on the last video. Um, so if there are uh, 100 grams initially, so I can plug 100 in for a sub zero. And I know the half-life is 1,620 years. So I can plug 1,620 in for T. And I know the amount at that time because if 1,620 years is the half-life, there should be half of the initial amount of radioactive radium left. So uh, A of T should be equal to 50. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this equation here for k. Um, so when I do that, uh, again, I want to isolate the exponential function so I can divide both sides by 100. 50 divided by 100 is 1 half, and that's equal to e raised to the 1620 times k power. And then again, I can take this exponential equation and rewrite it in log form, or I can take the natural log of both sides. Either way, we get the natural log of 1 half equal to 1620 times k. And that's going to make k equal to the natural log of 1 half divided by 1620. Okay, now, we said at the start of the problem that k, because this is an exponential decay function, k should be negative. Is k negative? And at first glance, it doesn't look negative. But if we think about the graph of a natural log function, the graph of a natural log function looks like this, where it has an x-intercept at 1, 0. If I take the natural log of 1 half, that's going to be somewhere over in here. That is, in fact, a negative quantity. So although k doesn't look negative, k is negative. Now, we can actually, if we want to use our log properties, we can rewrite the numerator as the natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 2 over 1620. And because the natural log of 1 is 0, we can then write k as negative the natural log of 2 over 1620. So in written in that way, k actually does look negative, okay? But both of those boxed values for k are exactly the same. Okay, so it does not matter which of the two we pick. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the top one. So I know then that a of t is equal to a sub, sorry, a sub 0, which is 100, times e raised to the power of the natural log of 1 half divided by 1620 times t power. I don't want to like do a decimal approximation for k because if you round k's value early, if the calculation has big enough numbers, it's going to throw off the accuracy of your final answer. So we actually want to leave k in exact form as the natural log of 1 half divided by 1620. Uh, and then what this problem is asking us to find is the amount present after 300 years. So that is A of 300, <coughs> which is 100 times E raised to the power of the natural log of 1 half over 1620 uh, times 300 power. And that's going to make A of 300 uh, approximately... Um, when we re round this result to three decimal places, I got 87.954, and then my unit of measure here is grams. <clears throat> okay, so again, with these exponential growth and decay problems, if you're not explicitly told what K is, your first step is to figure out what K is, and then you can proceed with uh, solving the problem. Okay. I'm going to have you guys give this next example a try uh, on your own. So directions here say that a culture of bacteria obeys the law of uninhibited growth. Then the problem says if 300 bacteria are present initially and there are 500 present after one hour, 
how many will be present after four hours, and then how long until there are 1,500 bacteria. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, uh, give that example a try, uh, and then when you're done, uh, you can unpause and check the solution to it. Okay, so a uh, three-part question here. Um, first thing we have to do, okay, number one, we're looking at an exponential growth function. Um, so uh, we know our K value should be positive, um, but we're not explicitly told what K is. So step number one for us is going to be to find K. So again, we have our function here, A of T, equal to A sub zero times E raised to the KT power. We know the initial uh, population or amount is 300. Uh, we know that there are 500 bacteria present after one hour. So I can plug 500 in for A of T and one in for T. So that makes 500 equal to 300 times E raised to the K power. And then we can solve for K dividing both sides by 300. So that's going to make the left-hand side simplify to 5 thirds equal to E raised to the K power. And then when we take the natural log of both sides, uh, we get the natural log of 5 thirds equal to K. Okay, so uh, that's our K value. That's the first thing we need to determine. And then we can go ahead and plug that uh, into our... Uh, exponential growth function, so A of T is equal to 300 times E raised to the natural log of 5 thirds uh, times T power. And this is asking uh, how many will be present after 4 hours. So A of 4 is going to be 300 times E raised to the natural log of 5 thirds times 4 power. Um, I know the question doesn't ask us for this here, but if we rounded this to the nearest bacteria, um, I got that to be 23, oops, 2,314 bacteria. Okay, uh, you're going to get a decimal. I, I didn't work this one out um, to compute that decimal rounded to three decimal places, but you guys can use your calculator to figure that out. And then the last question asks how long until there are 1,500 bacteria. So for that, we're going to plug 1,500 in for A of T. And that's equal to 300 times E raised to the power of the natural log of 5 thirds times T. And then we are going to... Um, <clears throat> divide both sides by 300. So 1,500 divided by 300 is 5, uh, and that's equal to E raised to the power of the natural log of 5 thirds um, times T. Um, we can then take the natural log of both sides. So we get the natural log of 5 equal to, when I take the natural log of the right-hand side, we get the natural log of 5 thirds times t, and that's going to make uh, t equal to the natural log of 5 over the natural log of 5 thirds. Um, so when I do that on my calculator, give me just a second. Uh, 
uh, I got that to be approximately 3.424, uh, and then my unit of measure there is going to be uh, hours. Okay, so that's it with exponential growth, exponential decay, and uh, half-life. Uh, let's move into logistic growth next. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on logistic growth. Logistic growth is something that we get into uh, in a lot more detail in Calc BC. Um, but basically, when you have an exponential growth function, like an exponential growth function, your graph is going to behave something like that, where um, the function grows at an exponential rate forever. So there are no factors that work to slow down the growth uh, of a population. Okay, with logistic growth, your graph looks entirely different. Okay, so with logistic growth, um, your graph winds up starting like the graph of an exponential growth function. And then what happens is um, your graph winds up, like the growth winds up slowing down, okay? Where the graph looks like such. Uh, and if those of you who are familiar with the logistic growth function, there is going to be a horizontal asymptote for the logistic growth function, okay? Uh, and that is going to be, um, we'll call it, I guess, the line y is equal to a. That is called the carrying capacity. Okay, and what the carrying capacity refers to, that is the maximum sustainable population. Okay, so um, it's the maximum sustainable population. So uh, it is possible for your population to exceed the carrying capacity for a short time, but the factors that we talked about that slow the growth of a population that we mentioned at the start of the lesson, lack of food, lack of water, predators, disease, so on and so forth, um, they will wind up forcing that population to grow to its carrying capacity. Now, if you look closely at um, this curve here, this curve changes from being concave up to concave down. So that point in blue is your point of inflection. That occurs halfway to the carrying capacity. Okay, so if like the carrying capacity of your population was like 2,000, um, your logistic growth model, so your population would grow at an exponential rate until your population reaches half of the carrying capacity, which is 1,000. And then once that happens, uh, the curve winds up changing from growing at an increasing rate Okay, so that means that the second derivative is positive, so the graph is concave up, to growing at a decreasing rate, which means the second derivative is negative and the graph is concave down. Okay, so that's stuff that we talked about, like you'll need to know that stuff when you get into Calc BC, and we'll talk a lot more about that uh, in that class. Uh, but for right now, you just need to know kind of like what a logistic growth model looks like. Okay. And as far as the equation is concerned, we will, in Calc BC, derive uh, the equation of uh, the logistic growth model. But for right now, uh, your population at time t, y of t, is going to be equal to the carrying capacity A divided by 1 plus B times E raised to the negative RT power. Okay, so we're just going to do a two-part uh, example here um, with logistic growth. Um, I wrote this example a long time ago, and it's kind of, um, I guess, appropriate in this climate. 
So it's on a college campus, and appropriate because I'm out with COVID currently. So uh, on a college campus of 5,000 students, uh, one student returns from vacation with a contagious flu virus. The spread of the virus is modeled by uh, the function y of t, which is equal to 5,000 divided by 1 plus 4,999 times e raised to the negative 0 0.8 times t power, where t is greater than or equal to 0, where y is the total number of students infected after t days. Okay, and it says the college will cancel classes when 40% or more of the students are infected. Okay, so part A says how many students are infected after five days, and then you're asked to round the result to the nearest whole number. Okay, so this is asking us in part A to calculate y of five. So um, that is the number of students infected at time t is equal to 5. So when we plug 5 in the place of t, we get 5,000 over 1 plus 4,999 times e raised to the negative 0 0.8 times 5 power. And then when we plug that into our calculator, I got that to be approximately 54 students. <clears throat> okay, part B is going to be a little bit more complicated. So part B says, after how many days will the college cancel classes? Okay, so it says the college will cancel classes when 40% or more of the students are infected. So we know that there are 5,000 students uh, on campus, so 40% of that is 2,000. So we're going to plug 2,000. Uh, in for uh, y of t, and then we are going to solve this equation here for t. So we get 2,000 equal to 5,000 over 1 plus 49.99 times e raised to the negative 0 0.8 times t power. Okay, so if we want to solve this equation here for t, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by what's highlighted in yellow and then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by what's highlighted in blue. Okay so when I do that we get one sorry we get one plus 4,999 times e raised to the negative 0 0.8 uh, times t power and that's going to be equal to 5,000 divided by 2,000, which is five halves on the right-hand side. Okay, so all I want to do to solve this equation here for t uh, is I want to work to isolate the exponential function. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract one on both sides. So we get 4,999 times e raised to the negative 0 0.8 times t power is equal to 5 halves minus 1 is 3 over 2. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4,999. So that's going to make e raised to the negative 0 0.8 times t power uh, equal to 3 over... When I divide both sides by 49.99, we get 99.98. And then I can take the natural log of both sides. So taking the natural log of the left-hand side gives me negative 0 0.8 times t. On the right-hand side, we get the natural log of 3 over 9,998. And then lastly, we're going to divide both sides by negative 0 0.8. When we do that, uh, I found t to be approximately... Um, 10.139 days. Okay, so 
you know, similar in some ways, um, we're just plugging stuff into a formula. Um, this one's a little bit more complicated to solve for t than the uh, exponential growth and decay formula was. Okay, but um, that should be um, a good enough set of examples to give you an idea uh, of what you're doing. If you guys can recall back in the beginning of chapter seven, uh, we went over uh, compound interest. So you guys are going to have some compound interest problems uh, in your homework for this section as well. Okay, so um, that's going to be it. And that's the end of chapter seven for you. Um, we're going to take a quiz on 7-1 to 7-4 next week sometime. Uh, and then you guys are going to take your first midterm on the three sections we did in chapter five and all of chapter seven, probably the week after. Okay, so just so you guys can plan ahead. All right, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.